everyone. Welcome to our worship service today. I'd like to especially welcome you if this is your first time joining us. I pray that our hearts will be blessed as we experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day and the opportunity to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, I pray that we would experience the reality of your presence with us even right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me invite you to sing along as Aaron leads us in some music.
I'd like to invite you to continue to worship by giving back to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father has entrusted us with everything that we have. And we worship by returning to Him what He has blessed us with in the first place. You can give in one of three ways. The first way is by mailing your giving to 162 Sherwood Road, Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, C1E0E4. Or you can give by e-transferring cbcgivings at gmail.com. Finally, you can give by visiting our church website at mychurchfamily.ca and clicking on Give. Well, let's continue to worship by singing again. Good morning, everyone. As I mentioned last week, we're taking a break from 1 Samuel and we'll return to it in a couple weeks. Today, I want to uh, follow along on a theme that I started last week about how God speaks. We can be thankful that God really does speak. He could have created everything and then become silent. But he does speak, and when he does, he speaks with authority. In fact, there is so much authority, so much power behind his words, that his words create light, fling planets into orbit, and breathes life into humanity. We concluded last week by saying that God speaks with a purpose. He creates, he blesses, and then he gives us tasks. He doesn't speak simply for the sake of speaking, but he speaks to give us a purpose. God's act of revealing himself is called revelation. And you may recall that there are two main categories of revelation. There is general revelation and special or specific revelation. 
Specific revelation is God making himself known at a specific time and place to a specific people. When God reveals himself to us through his word, the Bible, that is specific revelation. And since we had such a beautiful summer to enjoy our island, today I'd like to focus on general revelation. You know, in his play, As You Like It, William Shakespeare once coined the famous phrase, All the world's a stage. Although I'm pretty sure that Shakespeare probably wasn't thinking of God's revelation when he wrote As You Like It, he was right when he said that all the world's a stage. It is sort of like the movie uh, The Truman Show. Jim Carrey plays Truman Burbank, uh, a cheerful insurance adjuster in, in a cozy island town whose days run like clockwork. That, uh, that is until a day uh, when a stage light falls out of the heavens and crashes near his car. As Truman begins play, paying attention to the world around him, he discovers little by little that he is the unwitting star of a reality television show. Looking back through his life and at the world around him, he sees the, the clues to reality were there all along. I think that is a good metaphor for how billions of people live their lives every day. They go about their routines, sometimes suspecting the world around them is trying to tell them something about itself and, and what's outside of it, but failing over and over again to put those clues together. Meanwhile, others see the signs in daily life. The sun's rising, the seas swelling, the, the changing of the seasons, the clockwork of the solar system, the intricacies of DNA, as if they, they all uh, are all peaks behind Shakespeare's stage. Creation is telling us something. It's telling us something about God. It cries out that there is a creator. In fact, the world around us is telling us what the Creator is like and even tells us a little bit about His plans. We call this reality general revelation because it refers to the general way God reveals Himself to people everywhere. So let's start today by making this point. God reveals His existence through creation. Let me read for you from Psalm chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse proclaims the work of His hands. Day after day they pour out speech. Night after night they communicate knowledge. There is no speech. There are no words. Their voice is not heard. Their message has gone out to the whole earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming from his home. It rejoices like an athlete running a course. It rises from one end of the heavens and circles to the other end. Nothing is hidden from its heat. According to this passage, creation is constantly saying something about its creator. Or perhaps I should say that God is constantly revealing something about himself through creation. We get the idea uh, from this passage that the world is like a, a loudspeaker or a stage as Shakespeare saw it, all pointing to God's glory. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse proclaims the work of His hands. Secondly, God reveals His attributes through creation. I'd like for you to use your imagination for a moment. 
Suppose you came home to find a package on your step with a note attached to it that said, these are the personal effects of your twin brother Joe, recently deceased. Once you got over the shock of discovering that you had a twin brother you, you never knew about, you open the package to look at the contents. You hope that they might tell you something about your brother. If the box contained a leather jacket, a set of brass knuckles, and some cigarettes, that wouldn't tell you everything about your brother, but it would certainly give you a general impression, wouldn't it? If the box contained a set of watercolor paints, a, a beret, and a tin of organic breath mints, that would give you an entirely different impression, wouldn't it? The package's existence wouldn't just tell you that you had a twin brother, but it would also tell you uh, a little bit about him. In the same way, the universe not only tells us that there is a God, but it, it also has some general things to say about him. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, Paul writes, For the invis invisible attributes that is, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. In this passage, we learn that general revelation doesn't tell us everything there is to know about God. We can't hear the specific gospel message of salvation in the declaration of the heavens. But still, enough is communicated that people are without excuse. Paul says that the visible world reveals God's invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature. We see God's power revealed through the, the, the power of a lightning storm, a, a hurricane, the, the vastness of the universe, the incomparable vastness of space, that the power of a volcanic eruption or an earthquake, those things all humble us. These displays of power give us an overwhelming sense of being in the presence of God's eternal power. As Matt Chandler once said, nobody stands at the base of the Rocky Mountains and says, remember that time that I benched 300 pounds in high school? How is God's divine nature revealed through, through creation? Well, Genesis says that we were created in God's image. We all have an innate sense and, and we all have instincts that point us to the reality of God's divine nature. Mankind has a general desire for justice and fairness. We have a drive to cr create and the ability to express and experience love. All of these things point away from the notion that we are just here through chance or some cosmic lottery. God reveals His attributes through creation. Well, finally, God also reveals His intentions through creation. In Acts 14, at the beginning of the missionary journeys, Paul and Barnabas are in Lystra when a priest of Zeus begins to uh, lead a crowd in making sacrifices to them. Barnabas and Paul interrupt the worship and they say, people, why are you doing these things? We are people also just like you. And we are proclaiming good news to you that you turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to go their own way, although he did not leave himself without a witness, since he did what is good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. 
as the people of Lystra attempted to worship Paul and Barnabas through the sacrifices, um, Paul and Barnabas desperately wanted these people to know the good news, that Jesus has made the, the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. And he did this to honor the will of a heavenly father who had been far better to the, those unsaved people to light in Lystra than Zeus ever had been. The missionaries cried out, you have proof. He did not leave himself without a witness since he did what is good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. When we look around at the world, we cannot help but notice that it's broken. But we also have to admit that blessings still exist. God desires to bless everyone. Jesus said in Matthew, For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God intends for the happiness that we experience in things like marriage and parenting and the good gifts to point us to him. The gifts people enjoy in this life point to the giver. But you know, not everyone notices. Have you noticed? When you look around, do you see the Creator's fingerprints everywhere? Do you see His attributes? Do you see His intentions? For instance, can you see the new life He desires to provide through the metamorphosis of the butterfly? Or the change from winter to spring? Do you see Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection reflected in the world around us? Just like Shakespeare, the reformers thought the world was a grand theater in which God showcases His glory. One thing we must say about this theater, of course, is that it is not itself the story, as some people would like to believe, but it's the stage for the story. Like a, a good set displayed on stage tells us something of the story before the players even enter and, and begin their lines, it is the script that really reveals. And that script is something I'd like for us to look at next Sunday. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do display who you are. You, you display what you are like through creation. And Father, you do this in magnificent and, and glorious ways. Father, I pray that, that we would all stand in awe of your beauty and your majesty when we look at creation. Father, it's through that that you choose to reveal yourself. But Father, you've chosen to reveal yourself in the ultimate way through your Son, Jesus Christ. It is to Him that we look for our salvation. And so, Father, I pray that we would find all that is good and all that is lovely and all that is pure in Him. And Father, I pray that you would impact our lives, that you would continue to speak to our hearts throughout your creation and ultimately through your Word. In Jesus' name. Amen.
matchless wisdom of his ways that mark the path of righteousness. His word a lamp unto my feet, his spirit teaching and guiding me. And oh, the mystery of the cross, that God should suffer for the lost, so that the fool might shame the wise, and all the glory might go to Christ. Grant me wisdom from above to pray for peace and cling to love. And teach me humbly to receive the sun and rain of your sovereignty. Each strand of sorrow has a place within this tapestry. Street.